Welcome back. Panelists here, Amy Walter, editor-in-chief and publisher of the Cook Political Report, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Leanne Caldwell, Eddie Glaude Jr. of Princeton University, and Megan McCain, columnist for the DailyMail.com. It's good to have a McCain back on Meet the Press. Thank you. So, nice, Very much nice to have you me. there. So let's start with what we've learned about what's going on in Congress. Leanne, this is your turf. Um, I'm sure you caught the number Cory Booker said, which is sometimes, look, whether it's $3 trillion or 2.5, <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> the number's moving. What's going to happen this week? The number is moving. And the reason it's moving is because they know that they can't get $3.5 trillion. That has been made clear. But there's problems with the number, too. And that is that people like Senator Joe Manchin, who have said they won't support $3.5 trillion, also won't give a specific number. And so Speaker Pelosi is trying to negotiate legislation with the moderates, with the progressives, and with people like Senator Joe Manchin in the Senate who aren't specific on what they want. So it's a Rubik's Cube, it's a Venn diagram, and it's every <laughs> sort of <laughs> like crazy mathematical thing that they're trying to fit together. And it's extremely complicated. And my sources say they don't know how it's going to play out yet. The Pythagorean theorem in here at all? <laughs> and, uh, uh, Amy, the distr- I, I it was remarkable to me that Cory Booker was like, yeah, I, I don't. He didn't say I don't trust, but he but then it- described a situation that he says, I don't trust. I know we're not supposed to do this, but before we came on, we were chatting about this. Um, And we uh, were reminded of the number of times where the House has felt like they were hung out to dry, Mm -hmm. that they passed something, whether it's climate, whether it's back in the 90s, the BTU tax, only to find that the Senate... Oh, this has happened to House Republicans, too, right? This is a, this is a Senate fair. and the House do this to That's each fair. other, no matter it who's It happened with the health care bill, right? Right. They yeah. took that big vote and then watched the Senate go. Right. To me, where we are, though, is so much driven by, um, you know, that, that phrase that uh, Mike Tyson once had, that everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth, right? Yeah. And the plan back in the spring was, by this point, we would be free from COVID. The economy would be roaring back. That's and of course, the momentum that that would bring to this legislative process. Democrats would come together. This would be, um, you know, not as big of a lift as it is right now. Now right. what we have is a president who's desperate for his party to yeah. give him momentum, right? He's not bringing it to the table. Megan, I want you to play a reporter here for us because you may have the best uh, sense of Kirsten Cinema. I know you have a pretty good personal relationship. What does she, we don't? That's the frustration Democrats say is they don't know what Joe Manchin wants, they don't know what his bottom line is, and they don't know what her bottom line is. How would you describe it? Well, I mean, politically in Arizona, I think that's why people like her so much. Just anecdotally, uh, conservatives in my life really like her because, you know, she's holding uh, the line for conservatives in a lot of ways. Um, The question I always have is, uh, you know, for people like Joe Manchin, if it's not him, it's going to be a Republican. So this distaste and this, you know, outward hostility towards moderates in the Democratic Party surprises me. Um, I also was shocked by seeing Senator Booker talking about sort of openly this distrust between progressives and moderates. How the Democratic Party ultimately threads the needle, I don't know. But I will say that President Biden ran on being a moderate, as you said. He ran and won with the help of independent, centrist, you know, Trump uh, wary Republicans. And he is not governing as one. The Build Back Better agenda is the most progressive modern agenda of all time, uh, up to five trillion dollars, and it's not polling well. So I think I'm just confused as why they're doubling down on something that is cratering in the polls right now. You know, Eddie, I'm just curious. What do you? you no, no, no. But <laughs> should President Biden be leaning harder? Are you surprised he's not leaning harder to get this bipartisan? Imp- I, I would think he would need a signing ceremony yesterday. Absolutely. President Biden understood that he was in a moment where he had he needed to be a transformative president. It feels Chuck like we're in a political Groundhog Day, mm-hmm. right? We've just experienced a pandemic. We're still in it. Close to seven hundred thousand Americans are dead. The pandemic has revealed it was like a blue dye into the social and political body of the United States. And that alongside of the threat that Trumpism presented to, the demo- to our democracy, it revealed all sorts of troubles across every aspect of our society. And our response bears a striking resemblance to the very logic that, le- that informed how we've governed for the last 40 years. So I understand where this is a political show. We have to yeah. talk about the politics of it all. We're stuck. But... Damn. You know, I mean, it seems to me we're talking about a figure, a number, 3.5. Right. America's in trouble. And what what are politicians doing but haggling over 
it seems to me that the elements of an ideology that, it, that has revealed itself to be bankrupt. That's my view. Yeah. Back to Senator Cinema, I have reporting that says that out of all of this big reconciliation bill, there are all these different proponents. The thing that is most important to her is climate change. And why that is, so if things get scaled back, she wants climate change proposals to be included in it. But that gets back to the Venn diagram, because that's exactly what Senator Joe Manchin in this bill does not like. By the way, the other talking point is, hey, this is zero cost. Okay, it's all going to be paid for. And what's that going to look like? To me, this is the other big challenge for Democrats, is, as you pointed out in an interview with Senator Booker, there's a lot of discussion about the price tag. There's not a lot of discussion about the policy and how Democrats allowed this entire debate to be driven by, is it 3.5, is it 2.5, is it 1 point whatever, rather than what is the policy that we're trying to put forward? What's the name of this bill? We keep calling it yeah. reconciliation. We keep calling it the trillion-dollar social package. At least health care even... had a name, Affordable exactly. Care Act, Obama, even Obamacare, at least you right. do, but cares there's about no, health care. No, yeah. no American knows what's in this. And when Senator Booker said, well, you take the individual pieces, people like it, okay, but that's not what you're talking about right now. Ultimately, yeah. though, until COVID's resolved, I think I the politics for the president uh, is going to be difficult. Yeah. This, the COVID confusion doesn't help things. Yeah, at okay. all. I, don't, I still don't know if I'm supposed to get a booster or not. The other thing I would piggyback on what you're saying, Amy, is that Americans may not understand this bill in its entirety, especially if you're an average American working, but they do understand inflation. They understand what happened in Afghanistan. They understand that their gas prices are going up. They understand that Christmas toys are going to be more expensive for their kids. And that is something that will be a deal breaker for candidates coming up in the midterms. And I believe your Cook report uh, showed Virginia now officially a toss-up state. COVID, COVID, mm -hmm. COVID. In many ways, the reason why our Christmas presents mm -hmm. are going to be difficult to have, supply chain. Supply chain. And, you know, every 43 seconds... An American dies. One in 500 mm -hmm. dead from COVID. We're going to hit 700,000. Come on. It's, it seems to me that there, there's some stuff on the table for us to do. All right. Uh, can't resolve this now, but I have to take a break. Up Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.